And now, scenes from the next episode of Breaking Mayberry. All right, you're going to pick a Pierce Brosnan movie to remake. You're not going to do one of the movies that he made that were like, applauded you're going to do november man the 2014 from the look of it very generic action movie like well they were only raising a 7.5 million dollar budget my man i think it's because you can make it cheap you're not doing mama three up here you know (laughs) for the love of god at least aim a little bit higher like I, you were like, you kind of hit the nail on the head. If you were going to try to convince me to do a Pierce Brosnan sequel, yeah, you would do Dante's Peak. (laughs) Although this is apparently directed by the exact same guy. That's awesome. There's a lot you could do, right? Mars reattacks. Yes. (laughs) The Matador 2, more (laughs) Matadoring. The Matador 2, seeing red. Uh, oh, that's so good. <laughs> yeah. Like, I I was trying to come up with a funny example of a different Pierce Brosnan movie, but I can't remember any other Pierce Brosnan movies. I was trying to remember the name of uh, The Matter. I was like, that one where he has a mustache. What else? After the Sunset 2? Night? <laughs> <laughs> Nighttime? <laughs> No, airsoft guns were, like, almost exclusively owned by psychopaths. Yes. Like, and with psycho- irresponsible parents. I'm just going to say it. Yeah, if it wasn't owned by a psychopath, if just, like, a normal kid got their hands on an airsoft gun, guess who was coming over to play at some point? A fucking psychopath. Like, that gun was getting in the hands of a kid with poor impulse control. Because there were, like, so many stories where it would be like, oh, yeah, how is how is hanging out with Connor? Oh well, the airsoft gun came out, and then things got name. and then things got really dark. And like, because it would be like we went through a dark night of the soul. Like, I like emotional traumas were <laughs> open. Straight up. up becomes apocalypse now. Once that airsoft gun makes its, like, makes like, its way into presence, like oh, Phil got his hands on the airsoft gun, and then he started really dealing with the fact that his dad left, and then things just kind of. Got nuts. <laughs> it's basically like the airsoft gun came out and then I had the conch. <laughs> I had the conch and I could talk. There is a misconception that if you see a baby bird that whose, whose parents aren't around and you pick it up, that the your scent will appear on that bird that baby bird and the mother will abandon it then this is not true this is not true birds do not have super powerful senses of smell right so your weird human stink isn't enough to make a mother bird abandon its young Mm -hmm. what's much more likely happening though is that bird is not abandoned like that baby bird isn't abandoned you just don't see the mom You just don't see the parent, and you're getting in the way, and you might actually be drawing attention to that baby bird. So most of the time, if you see a baby bird like that looks like it's flailing or whatever, just chill out for a minute. Unless it's like bald, unless it's like a hairless, completely obviously like baby bird, like then you can pick it up and put it back in the nest. But most of the time, like most of the time, it's chill. Just let it go. Just sit back and enjoy the miracle of nature. Go touch birds. That is the lesson no, you should that's learn. Clearly, the, clearly it is the okay. opposite of what I said. It is okay to touch birds. It is open season on bird touching. Go out and do it. That's, that's so find, far from what I said. Find a nest. Get in there with your little fingers. Wriggle around. Really experience it. You thought that you couldn't touch touch baby birds before. Newsflash: you can do it all you fucking want. Get but in the there. Part- 